If there were a drug that would make you smarter, would you take it? Today, an increasing number of healthy people are using drugs without a prescription as a way to improve their mental function. It's called neuroenhancement, and if you want to find someone who's trying it out, just visit a college campus. All the drugs out there, including Oxycontin, of all the drugs out there in colleges, this is the main one being abused. It's up to about 70% during exam week in most colleges. College has changed a lot. When I went to college, we used to have a class called Critical Thinking 101. They wanted to, they wanted to promote critical thinking, get their students to think critically. And I've got to admit, it did pay off because I did begin to think critically. Sure, I'd be in my dorm room at night. I'd be like, you know, this bag of pot is definitely smaller than the bag of pot I bought last night. I am very critical of this. The reason I'm here today is uh, I, a guy down the hall had ADD medication. He had uh, something called Ritalin that had just come out. Now there's something like 5 million kids uh, prescribed Ritalin. There was about 100,000 back in 89. That's how it's grown. Um, and again, first of all, I, let me just say that I'm not against Ritalin or Adderall in any way. I think in some ways, for some students, they're great drugs. For other students, they're not good drugs. And they can really, I mean, they're, they're effective drugs. They can make an unemployable person employable. Uh, uh, unteachable student teachable, you know, a, a sloppy person neat. Um, but in some, in the wrong hands, in an addict, an addict's hands, they can be a horrible gateway drug. And you guys know what a gateway drug is. It can lead to, I mean, out west, it's leading to crystal meth. It's very similar. You know, the, the ingredients of, of these drugs, these drugs are, are, are similar. So again, my subject is, is the abuse of ADD medication like Ritalin and Adderall on college campuses. That's specifically what I want to talk about. Uh, because you guys will run into that when you go to college. It's, a, it's almost become an epidemic. I started giving these, uh, these Ritalin as a study. I started using it as a study aid to, you know, so I could study harder. Then a friend of mine decided to chop it up and we started snorting the stuff, right? So, and after that I started snorting everything and then, luckily I had no money so I couldn't buy cocaine. But a guy came along with a drug ecstasy. I don't know, that's still around, ecstasy? It is, it, 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 don't, <laughs> don't do that drug, please. You'll end up, oh, there we go. If you do ecstasy, you'll look like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, just, that, that's the best do not drug post you've ever seen. Like, guys, I mean, it doesn't get worse than that. Um, a lot of kids are doing it, uh, and a lot of kids are getting their drugs from other people, and uh, it's become a lot worse than it used to be. Um, so, and, and I'm just going to share my experience because I got addicted to the stuff. A surprising number of students are turning to drugs like Adderall and Ritalin, originally developed to treat attention disorders, to boost their brain power and help them make the grade. My story is I grew up here in Manhattan. I went to a, I, I came from a middle class family, upper middle class family, and I had a bad learning disability. Just couldn't, couldn't uh, focus, couldn't, uh, I couldn't, the slowest reading groups, always the slowest reading groups. I was in one of those classes, I was always in special ed my whole life. I'm in 12th grade. I was always in one of those little classes where there's like more parents and teachers and like six assistants and read a little line, you know, going to the lunchroom. And I really took the short little bus for a little while. Um, I know you guys look at me like, uh, tough to imagine, right? But, uh, but uh, I used to joke, my SATs were so low, my entire school district lost funding. I mean, I was a bad. And, and, and the poor kids that are actually being diagnosed and, and using it appropriately are being approached to get their drugs, you know? So that's, a, that's, that's what I, that grabbed me, um, you know, because they, they're being harassed so, so, they, you know, so they can get high. I was good at one thing in college, Smoke, like doing a big bong hit and not coughing. That's what made me popular. That was my whole identity, because I didn't cough. Like, hey, who's amounts of pot? No, iron lungs, they call them. It's funny that one thing makes you popular in one place and doesn't help you down the line. <laughs> On that all-important job interview after college, right? <laughs> oh, what are my strengths and weaknesses? <clears throat> well, I'm not that articulate, but... Uh, <clears throat> hold on, I brought something along here, just to demonstrate it. I think you're going to like this. <laughs> That was the worst bong impression I've ever done. I got out of college, I took a, I took a, uh, I got out of college, I took a career aptitude test. They get an idea what occupation I might be good at. You know these tests? Doctor, lawyer, kind. I took the test. The results indicated I'm an outstanding hunter-gatherer. <laughs> Thanks a lot.